Welcome back to Raid Shadow Legends. We are here going over Doom Tower Floor 114. It's supposed to be the hardest Doom Tower Floor to do. We've got a Siffy with two Rotos on Wave 2. We yeah. have a Torment on Wave 1 with Sir Nix in there and some more Rotos to deal with. What we're going to do is deplete anybody we want to kill with Inquisitor Shamal. Right. Plus he gives us 60 accuracy in the Doom Tower, which is amazing. We're going to bring in a whole bunch of stunners. We've got Silar as our fastest to make sure that we get a chance to go because she's going to do turn meter reduction right away along with slow speed. We've got Bellower, a rare Void Champion, and a stun set. Stun set on Silar as well. Then we have stuns coming in from Sile the Drakes. We have a Chak in here to help us because we need buffs up. For Inquisitor to work, for every buff that he has on him, he will ignore 25% defense. Now, I do have him in a Savage set. That way, we only need two buffs on him, and we can deplete anybody in the Doom Tower. Doesn't matter who it is. We can kill them and then try to apply fears. When his A2 kills, he tries to apply fear on everybody else. And we need to kill that Siffy in Wave 2 to be able to beat this. There he goes. Kill, <laughs> killed that Torment. Of course, Torment's back to life. Now, he is going to die here in a minute. He's going to be down for quite a while. But that's only because I had a bad run. You can restart this wave as many times as you want. Try to get a good run. I recorded quite a few. I went into third wave. I even made it to the end wave quite a few times, and I had some issues there with bad luck. It's a it's a it's an RNG fest, right? We're trying to bring in champions that you might have. We're bringing in Sile the Drakes. We've got a check. All epics. No legendaries. The only legendary we have in here is one that you get as a login reward. So we're trying to get through 114, but I'm also going to show you the power of the Inquisitor. Shamal is amazing. He can deplete anybody. I don't care what it is. Any person in any wave in the Doom Tower, he can one-shot them very easily. And we're doing it without an increased attack. If you want to bring in Seeker or somebody like that to give him an increased attack, it's done. It is over with. He will kill anybody so easily because he's going to kill all these right now without even having an increased attack. Now, he went down again, unfortunately. We're battling it out. This is what it's all about. We've got three people to do stuns right now. We've got a whole bunch of debuffs. Bellower's debuffs are actually helping us a lot. His A1, <laughs> I know it looked crazy. It's on auto right now. You can't, my head's in the way. It's on auto right now just because I was like, you know what, wave one, we can do this. We can auto wave one, even though we already had Sir Nick get his buffs up, but that's okay. Look at the power of this. It's insane. Now, I've had smoother runs where I've come in here with Inquisitor and we just down somebody, down somebody, down somebody. But then we messed up later on in the further runs. This was one of my better runs where it looked like it was out of control in the beginning. And we want him in here to be able to do damage too because we want to finish off the last person and have all our skills off cooldown when we go into the next wave. And we will, right? We're going to sit here. Okay, we can take a few hits. That's okay, all right? Also, when a check, even though he's doing these burns, we get healed based off of those burns from his passive. If you don't know the, the little wispy one in between Inquisitor and our style of the Drakes. Okay, now here's where you got to do, right? Slow speed. See who's stunned. It doesn't matter because we're going to kill Siffy. Get the buffs up on him. Now he's got three buffs. Siffy's done. Look at the fear. True fears on everybody else out there. Plus, we got the stuns. Another stun. We're fishing some more stuns there. Now we're waiting three turns on that move to come back around. All we need is three turns. Now, right now, can we take a hit from this? Dark Elhane, right? Whenever she gets frozen, she's gonna. This one's stunned, so she can't pop out of it. But her turn meter is not gonna come back that much either. So I was like, you know what? We'll take it. Because we can freeze those Rotos, even though we didn't. For some reason, it didn't. There's a 90% chance. I haven't upped him to a 95% chance with Fearsome Presence. So maybe it just didn't try to apply, or maybe we got resisted. That's all right. Either one, we're still making it through. We're still going through. Revived again with Sal the Drakes. Perfect. He's got he's only got one buff, so he's not gonna do that much damage. So we'll wait for his A. We'll wait to save his A2 until we get a couple more buffs on him. It's really weird with this guy. Well, it's not weird, it just makes sense. You're not you're not ignoring any defense unless you have buffs up. If you only have one buff, there we go. Boom, dead. Fear on everybody else. If you only have one buff up, he's he hits for weak, super weak. You gotta have multiple buffs. At least get to the point to where you're ignoring 100% defense and he's going to blast everything. And if you're lucky enough to make a team that has an increased attack, he's really going to blow it away. It doesn't matter what it is. And I just show you this team because you might see this team work and how it functions and go, you know what, Stu? I like this team. I like where you're going with it. And I've got some legendary champions that I can put in place of a couple of these other ones with him and really make it work out. I've got a Duchess. Right, I'm going to put a Duchess in here, give him that increased attack, give him all the buffs he needs, and he's just going to 
annihilate anybody. So you get an idea of what's going on here, and you can incorporate your own champions into it, and then he comes in here and just blasts him. Now, you might think you don't need him, but I'm going to tell you right now, he is the only reason why I can get past 114 like this. Because you have to have somebody to come in there and take care of the Siffy. With the Siffy there, whenever Rotos takes a turn, he clears all debuffs off him. Everything. So he's always going to take a turn. He's always going to attack. Siffy's just healing nonstop. Her A1 is even healing her passive. She is ridiculous. Unless you have a way to take her out and then control everybody else like I'm doing. Look at that. Siffy was down at two hits. She didn't even take a third hit from him. Just two hits. He doesn't even have increased attack like I keep saying. Then like here, we're just going to hit auto in just a minute. Watch. We're doing A1s, right? Whenever we need turn meter reduction on people we didn't lock up, we do have a skill lock up on A1 over here from um, Sir Nick. And then we just got a stun up. I mean, it's just Doom Tower. Stun them up. Bring in that tanky bellower like my tanky bellower guy. Give him a stun set. Put a stun set on Silar. Get her fast enough. We got uh, Shamal's down again. <laughs> He's down. He's down again. But he did his job. Look, you don't believe it, but he did his job. I know it doesn't look like he's up a lot and he's doing what he needs to, but he is. He is a very important piece because if I didn't, actually, he didn't have enough. I've got it on full auto, so they're just going off. If I didn't have him in here, he would. this wouldn't work. I need somebody to be able to take out those champions. But if you've got somebody else besides him and you don't like the way he functions, even though he is like the like number one DPSer for ignore defense, single target, he's very high up there. I don't know how, I think he does more damage than Faceless. I'm pretty sure he does just about as much damage as Royal Huntsman. He can put out some serious damage. He's damn amazing, plus he's Void Affinity, so it works out really well for us here. And it's on a three-turn cooldown. And this is it. This is 114. We wrapped him up, and we beat him all down. But I'm telling you, we could not do it without him. We have to have him in there. We have to have somebody in there to do damage. We have to have Silar in here as our fastest to make sure we can do that decreased turn meter and slow speed so the rest of my people can go. We've got a Chak in here to do all the dirtiness that he does. Plus, we're using his buffs, the guy on the far right, his buffs on the A2 to make sure that our Inquisitor has the buffs up so that he can do the damage and ignore defense. Bellower with all his abilities are it's just amazing. And try to stun them with that. We've got Sal the Drakes, everything that she can do. This team works really, really well for the Doom Tower. So try to incorporate all this in if you can. I mean, just these four alone are beasts. They are so good. And then bring in whatever kind of DPS. But this guy right here, since he can kill anybody at any time, as long as that A2 is, well, I don't know, anybody, since he can kill anybody as long as he has buffs up on him, he is really suited well for this. Plus, once you kill someone, he'll put up all those fears. He gets a turn meter increase with everything that he does. A very solid epic champion. Almost bordering with a lot of things on, you know, in between an epic and a legendary. I'm going to play a little bit of music and show you all the gear on these champions. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Please subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you guys all in a video soon.